Hi guys, welcome back to Freeze Drying Mama. I've had some requests for like how to reconstitute some of this food, ways you would make it, and we're gonna talk about Thanksgiving leftovers. Um, I just finished doing a bunch of trays full of Thanksgiving leftovers, and I set aside some so that we would, I could show you what we're doing. So I have sweet potatoes here, and yes, I make sweet potatoes with like more marshmallows than sweet potatoes, so they take a little bit longer than other dishes might. Um, I have regular mashed potatoes here, and I have stuffing. Um, I did not put gravy in this batch because we ate all of our gravy, so I didn't have any gravy leftovers. However, I'm going to show you how I would make this um, and reconstitute it. This was boiling. I just re I just reheated it in the microwave. If you were like in a survival situation or you were camping or power outage or something and you were going to do this, you could do it on a fire. You could do it on one of those little Bunsen burners or a, or a rocket stove, something like that. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is, I'm a huge fan of those KFC like bowls where they have the chicken and the mashed potato and all the stuff in it. So that's literally what we're going to do, except we're going to do the sweet potatoes in a different dish. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get up how much I would think I would want. And remember, the size of the food that you freeze dry, it never changes. Like, it's not like a dehydrator where you dehydrate the meat and it shrinks to like a quarter of the size. Or a grape, how it shrinks down to a size of a raisin. They literally keep their size, so you know how much you're going to have. So I'm going to say, I'm a mashed potato freak, so I'm going to go a little bit more than that. Maybe more than that. Okay, one more. Okay, one more. All right, maybe a little bit more. Okay, that's probably good. No, I'll have a little bit more than that. Okay. Anyways, and I'm not a huge turkey fan right now, so turkey meat, that's all I want. <laughs> that's literally all I want. I set that aside so I wouldn't sit there and try to put a bunch in there and make me eat it. Okay, and then I have my stuffing, and I am a huge stuffing fan. Can you see how I didn't put very much in here? Because, again, huge stuffing fan, and it would turn into my mashed potatoes, and my bowl can only hold so much. So I'll put in how much I want this month, maybe more. Okay, we'll do this. Okay, yeah, does that look like too much? <laughs> my son's recording for me, and I'm like, does this look like too much? And he's like, I don't know, Mom, no judgment. Okay, so I know that this is going to be this much, all right, this much food for me. So I'm like... Yeah, my eyes are probably too big for my stomach, but I've had my cooking, as you can tell. Um, I like to eat. So, ignore the people in the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly put this, and I just, I do it slowly. You can see I have my tin foil here. I'm just going to slowly add it, and I'm not going to worry about it pooling in the bottom, because again, this is stuffing and mashed potatoes. It's going to be wet. This is hot, hot water. I'm trying not to touch it with my hands because I keep burning myself. Okay, you can see it as it's adding. See how the chicken is getting more absorbed? It's no longer that flaky. Now it's actually turning into the real chicken meat that we like. Here's the stuffing. See how it's falling apart now instead of being this crumbly mix that we have? The mashed potatoes are like powder. And now they're, oh yeah, I'm going to be eating this for breakfast. Yes, I'm so excited. See how it's like getting kind of fluffy actin. Oh, I'm so excited. I put this in from Thanksgiving like a couple days ago. It took me about took me about 38 hours to get this freeze dried. And I held, held had a whole bunch of trays. Okay, so remember, I don't have gravy. So I'm not going to be too stingy on the moisture, but I can sit here and kind of watch it. And then what I'm going to do is when I think it's about had enough, and I just slowly add it, because this is a pretty quick absorbing food. I think that's about good. And remember, this was hot water. It might, I'm gonna put a little bit more on there. A lot of people ask me, well, exactly how much? Oh, honey, I don't even know exactly how much mashed potatoes I put on there. I just did it to what I felt like. Okay, then I'm gonna cover that with my tin foil, and let's say I've got other plates to do, okay? Which I do. I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna do my sweet potatoes. And again, they have a different color and stuff because they had the, um, the marshmallows. And it's going to be hard for me to get to because marshmallows. And they were cooked marshmallows. And this is my, my favorite spatula, so I hope I don't break it. Okay. See, you can see the marshmallows. I mean, it's everywhere because, hello, it's delicious. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing with this one. And I don't need it to be powdered up. I can, it's not gonna be a big deal. It's not how hard that was. But I, now I'm just gonna reconstitute it. And it's gonna go slow. Again, this doesn't need to be fast. I've got my dinner over here simmering, like kind of simmering, if you will, kind of letting itself absorb. And you can see as it's getting softer, 
Um, and my sweet potatoes are going to be a little bit harder to reconstitute. It's going to take a little bit longer again because those that ma marshmallows. I literally put in two of the biggest bags of the mini marshmallows that you can find into one batch of sweet potatoes. I am that person. Um, I love my sweets. I love them so much. So we're going to let this one sit just for a minute. You can see how it's it's still hard, but ooh, look at it it's starting to get that creaminess back in there. Okay, now you could do this in one of these. Now look at that. Oh yeah, I sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. All day long. Those are my favorite. Mashed potatoes saved my life, ask my kids. But this, yeah, this I would I'd probably trade in a kid or two for a bowl of this. Like just saying, you didn't hear me say that, son. Okay, oh my gosh, yes. Those marshmallows, they worked awesome. Holy cow. Okay, and because it is, like I said, this is pretty thick, pretty dense. We're going to add a little bit more and just keep mixing it in. That's great. Oh my gosh, yes. I'm so excited. Okay, let's go check and see what's in our bowl over here. Well, that's going to absorb some more. Okay, I'm going to get me a new fork because the other one <laughs> is busy with the sweet potatoes. Okay. Oh, yes. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Look how moist that is. I hate that word. So I could probably still add some more water to it if I wanted to, but... It's falling apart perfectly. This is exactly what we want it to look like. This is just how I would have leftovers out of the fridge, right? Heat them up in the microwave, but let's say in a food storage situation, an emergency situation, I might have to eat this at home. That's awesome. Oh my gosh, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, okay. So now again, like I said, there's some hard spots. So you just had to have to add more hot water. It's not like you have to cook the meat. This is ready to eat, people. This is ready to be devoured and enjoyed. And oh, yes, I'm going to have to eat some more of it because I made the whole bowl for myself. And I don't like to share with others. I hear someone coming. Don't come in here. I'm eating this. I can see my son eyeballing it. Oh my gosh, look at how creamy those mashed potatoes are. How amazing that is. See, and I like it mixed up because it's one of those, like one of those bowls. And you can literally just, I have to eat it. Uh -huh. Sorry about that. Okay. So this is what I would do if I had just the bag. Oh my gosh, so good. Okay. So this is what I would do if I had just the bag and I was out in the woods, whatever, right? And let's say I have the capabilities of boiling water. I would open up the bag. Pop, like make the big wider and I would add hot water. I wouldn't be, have it be boiling because this does melt. This can melt. But I would put in hot water. Maybe just to the point of boiling or that I could drink it like if it was like a hot tea or a hot coffee or hot cocoa. I would definitely put that in here and then I would seal the bag up like it was my tin foil, right? That's exactly how I would do that. And I would put that in there and I would let it sit there for a little bit while it reconstitutes. Now, let's say you don't have access to hot water. I would say that anything on here is ready to eat. If it's already been cooked and you've already put it through the freeze dryer, you can literally eat it. It's chunk, it's gonna be crunchy. You're gonna probably want at least some cold water because you're, yeah, I forgot how dry that stuff gets. Okay, and you can still do that. We'll still do that with the sweet potatoes. My son, his favorite is sweet potatoes as well. So I'm gonna give him a little piece to try off camera. And I've got, yeah, that, it's crunchy, but. That packs a punch. That's like candy almost. Well, it is. It's mostly marshmallow. Hello. And butter. Um, that's really good. That actually turned out really good. So that's what's amazing about this freeze drying food is when you do a ready to eat option, cooked, anything cooked, um, burritos, you've seen on my burrito video. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Pizza, anything that's cooked, you can reconstitute it like this. Oh, I want to eat this right now. You can reconstitute it, add a little bit of water, whatever. You can steam things, which I'll do some more videos on how to reconstitute and steam up like lasagna, pastas, um, macaroni and cheese. That's a really good one to do. But when you pre, when you pre-cook it and you turn it into a ready to eat item, you're not limited to the cooking capabilities that you have. Because when sometimes if we have power outages, some people don't have wood stoves. Some people literally are stuck and they want to crack open a can of soup, but you can't cook it, right? It's done. It's ready for you. You can eat it in its, in its form. Just make sure you have some kind of water available. Even snow would work in your mouth. You know, as you're sitting there trying to reconstitute, my mouth is, is like saliva eating, but it doesn't do that when you sit there and eat a whole bunch of the freeze dried food. It just doesn't. So um, I would highly recommend that you definitely try out some of these things. Um, 
my favorite again, I'm gonna have to go with these two. I'll do some more um, reconstituting videos so you can kind of see how to incorporate ground bur ground burger into some um, into some recipes, how to use rotisserie chicken like I've done the freeze drying thing, how to use raw eggs. We'll talk about that too, but I hope that you get a chance to try some really delicious Thanksgiving leftovers when you freeze dry them. And if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go eat some now. So please hit subscribe. Don't forget to hit the little dingy bell notifications and keep following us for some great tips on freeze drying mama. Thanks guys, we'll talk to you soon.